Hello everyone, welcome to Salesforce Atlas. My name is Doris, so if you're new to the channel, it's really great to see you in the channel and I hope that you're doing great. In today's episode, I will discuss with you how to integrate Gmail with Salesforce. That's something I had to do a long time ago and I have a video for Outlook integration, but this time it's gonna be about Gmail. Integrating Gmail and Google Calendar with Salesforce could help your users save time by reducing redundant data entry and minimizing the need to switch between the tools. Also, this integration could assist your users in tracking email activities in the related contacts or accounts. All of this allows users to reduce manual data entry into different applications, access important email messages, schedule meetings and relevant Salesforce records in one place. Also, they can just focus on their sales or post-sales responsibilities and carry on with their work. As always, I'll be sharing one of my Trailhead playgrounds and uh, let's just go to Setup. And in Setup, I'll be looking for Gmail integration. So I can just type in in quick find box Gmail and it is right here under emails. So I go and select the Gmail integration and sync. And let's just check i have some errors here on the page missing microsoft exchange admin authorization consent i guess that will be fine most likely i use this playground for one of my previous videos so i'll just ignore this message i'm sure that you will not see this message it's... let's see if it still appears when i refresh the page well that's interesting it actually disappeared so that was a very odd one but Sometimes you just get very odd error messages. So I'll be here in the Gmail integration and Lightning Sync. So this will be quite straightforward. We are in Gmail integration and Lightning Sync. Here's a brief information about this section here. You can see I have two toggles right here. And the first one is for Gmail integration. Let users access Salesforce records from Gmail, what we are looking for. And the second one is Lightning Sync. Uh, I'll just go with the first one, Gmail integration, and uh, I will enable it. Uh, if I click on the let users access Salesforce records from Gmail, I will see some more sections appear. Now, these two, if I have enabled Gmail integration, then keep Gmail and Salesforce connected by default will be enabled as well. And uh, you can switch it off if you want. Then further on, you can continue customizing your content with app builder as it says and email application publisher layout actually if i select to enable this then i will have email application panes so as you may know you can create a different email panes based on various field values maybe two or three different departments are, are planning to use gmail integration and they have different needs they're using different objects and different um, custom fields then in that case you can create uh, different panes and uh, the same applies as well to email application pane assignments by profile. Now, again, if you have more than one team using, is planning to use Gmail integration, then maybe each team has uh, different profiles. Then you can, again, as well, set different pane assignments. And uh, you could also just go with the default that comes out of the box when you decide to go with Gmail integration. And then the email application publisher layout, that's the layout that we see in, in Gmail. On the side, you will see it a little bit later. So you have various, again, custom objects, custom fields, and you can as well customize this publisher layout. If you have maybe pre-sales team, they, have, they may, maybe use different objects and fields than the post-sales team are using, uh, maybe diff different contracts or other objects that are involved in this communication. So if you want to pull different types of data from Salesforce, then you will need to customize it. Or if you're happy with using the same default value, then just skip this and uh, carry on with the default one. You will see as you start using it, you will see what works best for you. Back to this Gmail integration. After you enable this feature, users or Google admins can get the Gmail integration from Google. So we actually have to go to get the Gmail integration and um, click on it, then confirm the redirect and continue again. 
So right now we will be in the Chrome Web Store and um, to enable this extension in our Gmail, we need to add, add, it, add this extension to Chrome. So I'll just go and do it for myself. And uh, it will again ask if you want, if you're sure that you want to add this extension, I'll just add the extension. And let's see, it will appear somewhere here. And now one very important thing, once you have installed this Chrome extension in your browser and you can see the icon here, uh, you can also right click on the icon and um, pin it if you haven't pinned it yet. Then I have also prepared another environment uh, where I will be testing it. And another thing important to note that this extension will be working only in your um, G Suite. So if you're using a, a standard free Gmail account, it won't be working. But if you're on G Suite, so it's for businesses, on business accounts, it will be working. Uh, you can see right here, I clicked on the extension here and I have a pop-up panel right here where uh, there's also a login to Salesforce button and I will log in, connect to my Salesforce environment. And just for this uh, video, I had to create a business account and set up as well a G Suite. So if you're not on a G Suite, then this extension is not going to work for you. Unfortunately, I ran into this issue and I wasn't aware of that either. But I still want to go ahead with the video and I wanted to sh fully show you how to integrate Gmail with Salesforce. Okay, now I'll go and complete this section here. So we have um, another browser where I need to log into this environment. And for me, it will be my playground environment. You might get a prompted message to verify your identity. It's one of the standard authentication methods. Once you have received the code and verified your environment, click verify. Then give Salesforce access to Google, click continue. And then the next step, Lightning to Gmail wants to access some specific uh, records or settings. So once you read and follow all of this through, then you either cancel or allow. So I assume you'll want to allow it. And then you'll simply click link account and go to Salesforce. So now you can see it is loading and this pane will provide some information that is in my Salesforce playground. So I can either click get started uh, and um, have a quick look how to navigate around this email pane. I just close it. Uh, get records into Salesforce. Yes, add contact leads and other records to Salesforce without leaving your email. So it will provide you some guidance and some steps as well, just so you are more familiar with this new environment. And uh, log communications to Salesforce. Yes, and know what's related as well. Then click finish. So I can already log an email and I have also prepared um, a dummy contact right here. Let's test this email builder. I have um, an option here, plus button with some global actions. Now I could create a new task or a new event. Now let me quickly create a new task and it will be related to this contact. Search contact already here. Edge communications assigned to, to myself and I can set it, as, let's say, completed. Due date was today and finish changing all right that's something else let's say it, e the subject will be email and we have completed this task task email was created perfect now if i go into salesforce environment and refresh the page then at the same contact level i should see this closed task in the activities pane and it is right here, you can see, I created just now, that's perfect. And then if I open, it is email, email, status completed, everything that I just populated in my Gmail. Now, if I go back, now if I compose an email and I need, I want to send it to the contact, all right, it's right here, subject will be test email and description will be test. Now I will click send and I want to log an email as well. That would be with Salesforce Atlas contact. 
I can remove, untick this box and add it to edge communications and log. That's it. So I've sent an email. It prompted page or screen flow to, to log an email with a few buttons and um, that's it. It is done. You can just click save, go back to Salesforce, go back, refresh the page. And now we should see a logged email and the task that I created before this email. And yes, you can see right here. So this is my, this is my task. We already had a look at it. And now this test email sent it just a minute ago. You can see right here and um, everything matches. Now, if I open this email and go to details, now I can see it's related to the account, status sent and uh, all right, so you can see some details as well. Now, if I go back, yeah, that's perfect. So you can see that this Gmail and Salesforce integration is working well. And uh, again, just remember that it will only work in your G Suite. I tried it in a, a simple free Gmail account and your extension will not be working, unfortunately. It is really easy to integrate if you are on G Suite and if you're a, if you're a business with several users and you are all using Salesforce at the same time, then it is really easy to set up everything in Gmail. And as you can see, it works flawlessly. I didn't have to enable Lightning Sync, didn't have to enable Einstein Activity Capture. It's quite straightforward and uh, works very nicely as well. Well, I hope that you found this video useful and there's something I myself discovered as well today that you can only use it on G Suite. You can't use it on free Gmail addresses. And I hope that you found it useful. And uh, thanks a lot for getting this far in the video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.